Ever since I graduated from my degree in astrophysics a couple of years ago, people have been asking me why I think they should study physics or astrophysics as well. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Instead, in this video, I'm going to talk about why you probably shouldn't study physics. Starting with number one, you want to do an easy degree. Now, a lot of people do want to do an easy degree to enjoy the social life that goes with university and to get the university experience without the difficulty of some of the subjects. Unfortunately, physics is hard. I mean, it's consistently ranked as one of the hardest degrees. And so if you're interested in going to university purely for the experience and not so much for the degree, then physics is not for you. Doing a physics degree requires an understanding of complex mathematics and abstract theories, and those are very difficult things to understand. So a lot of time has to be spent trying to understand them. And so if you are studying physics, then you need to be doing a lot of just that, studying physics. Now, this doesn't just mean going to lectures and labs, which is typically the bare minimum that you need to do. It also means that you need to be spending hours and hours studying physics, practicing problems, completing assignments, and revising for exams. All of this will take up a significant chunk of time, and so it's even harder, I would say, to maintain a healthy social life when you're doing a degree like physics. Now, that's not to say that you can't, because I'm an example of someone who did. I had a good social life, I was involved with clubs and societies, and I had a good group of friends. But it is very difficult and very important then that you manage your time very, very strictly. So if you're considering a degree because you want to have the university experience and you want to be involved with the social life of university more, then physics is probably not the one for you. Number two, you're not willing to tackle maths. Physics and maths are deeply intertwined. I mean, you can't really do physics without maths. It's the basis of which all physics is made up of. And so you need a deep understanding of maths to be able to succeed in physics. Now notice how this point isn't that you're bad at maths because that is a relative statement. And just like any other skill, maths can be improved through practice. So the important thing is not that you're good or bad at maths, but it's that you're willing to put in the work to understand the complex topics. Now fortunately, in the first year of a physics degree, you're typically gonna be doing some very fundamental maths, and this is done on purpose to try and bring everyone up to speed. And so this is the period where you're most likely going to need to focus on understanding the maths to make sure that you have the fundamentals. But as you get through to year two and three, you're gonna get into more complicated maths, especially with topics like theoretical physics, general relativity, and quantum mechanics. And so you'll start to see a lot of matrix mechanics and vector calculus and high-level geometry coming into the understanding of physics. And so if you're not willing to tackle those types of complicated maths problems, then physics, again, isn't the one for you. Number three, there is a high chance of burnout. Physics students in particular can feel this intense pressure to keep on top of the content of the course. And this is a very demanding thing and can lead to a high level of stress. And so burnout becomes a very real risk. And it's important to consider whether you can deal with the level of stress that comes along with a physics degree. And of course, when you combine the demands of a physics degree with the stress that goes along with it, then the burnout can easily lead to more serious mental health problems. Now this isn't to say that everybody does fall into this trap and I don't think it is a very common thing but it is definitely not insignificant and it's definitely worth mentioning. There are of course ways of preventing this by managing time so that you don't fall into these levels of stress and by asking for help when you need it. But if you're unsure about handling high levels of stress then studying physics might not be for you. Number four, you want to study something specific. When you choose to study physics you're choosing to study all different areas of physics at the same time. So whether you're interested in studying astrophysics or theoretical physics or nuclear physics or medical physics, that doesn't really matter when you start off your degree because pretty much all students will be exposed to the same type of material in the first few years. So as you start in year one, pretty much all students do the same thing and there's very few options to specialize in any one of the fields. It's only when you get to sort of year three and maybe into your master's year that you can really specialize down into the specific areas area of physics that you're interested in. So even if you're an astrophysics student and all you really are interested in is what's going on in space, 
You've still got to be prepared that for most of your degree, you're going to be doing a general physics degree. And when you do start to specialize into astrophysics modules, you'll still have to do modules in quantum mechanics and theoretical physics and experimental physics. And as I've mentioned, you've also still got to do labs. And if you're not interested in experimental physics, then you've got to be prepared that for at least one or two semesters, you've got to be doing those. And you've also got to be prepared to do a lot of programming because physics in the modern age is primarily driven by programming and all of the research is done through solving problems programmatically. So if you're going into a physics degree because you're only interested in studying a very small area of physics then you've got to be prepared to study the rest of physics as well until you get into the upper levels of academia when you get into a master's and a PhD we may have more chance to specialize. Number five, you don't like exams. Unfortunately, physics is primarily an exam-based subject and most modules will be primarily assessed with exams. In fact, from my experience, most modules are 80% exam weighted, if not 100%. And so if you don't like exams, physics probably isn't for you. Number six, you're not passionate about physics. Now physics, as I've mentioned, is a very hard subject and a lot of the time, the only thing that really pushes you through those difficult days is the passion that you have for the subject. If you're not interested in learning about how the universe works and you're primarily interested in the academic clout that goes with studying such a hard degree, then the best bet is not to study something like physics. I've seen people who study physics because it's the smart thing to study and they've got bragging rights with their friends and family saying that they've studied physics or astrophysics. While those bragging rights are a fortunate or maybe even an unfortunate product of doing a hard degree, they shouldn't be the primary reason that you're studying physics. The people who I found to be most successful at studying physics were those who were passionate about physics and those who are willing to put in the work to study physics. You've got to have that intrinsic motivation to be able to push yourself through the difficult days of going through complex mathematics or through challenging theories and realize that at the end of the day, what you're doing is understanding what is at the forefront of human knowledge. Physics is a very important subject and a very powerful subject, but it does require passion to be successful at it. Because if you're not passionate about the subject, then you're going to quickly fall out of love with it and it's going to be very tedious to try and complete your degree. So those are the reasons why I think you shouldn't study physics, but if you've made it this far through the video and you're still considering or still interested in studying physics, then the chances are it might be the degree for you. Starting with number one, you want to develop employable skills. Now I've talked about this a lot more in my video on physics careers options, but the summary of it is this. There are two types of skills that are important to employers, no matter what industry you go into. Those are hard skills and soft skills. Now hard skills are technical or knowledge based skills like maths or programming, whereas soft skills are more of your personality traits. Now in physics, you develop your hard and soft skills in a very employable way. For example, the hard skills you develop like maths and programming can be applicable to a wide range of industries. Everyone's looking for someone who can program or someone who understands complex maths because it helps their business. And the same goes with soft skills where you learn problem solving skills and communication and research skills. All of these skills that you learn in a physics degree can put you at a massive advantage compared to people who study other degrees. And so if you want to give yourself an advantage in the workplace, then you should study physics. Following on from this is number two. You want to have a wide range of career options after you graduate. Now, a lot of students don't really know what they want to do when they graduate. And even more than that, change what they want to do midway through their degree as they realize that they are in interests are changing. And so physics gives the great opportunity that you have a wide range of career options available once you graduate. Now I talk about this a lot more in my careers video again, but it comes down to this, which is that physics students are highly employable. Employers from all different industries want physics students because of the skills and the attributes that come along with studying physics. And so if you're not sure what you want to do when you graduate and you want to keep your options open, then studying a physics degree is a great option. And number three, probably the most important factor in this entire video is you are interested in learning about the subject. You've got a passion for physics, you've got a deep curiosity for how the universe works and you want to study that a lot more. Studying physics allows you to study what is at the forefront of human knowledge in multiple different areas. As you go further through your degree you'll start to realize that the content you're being taught is revolutionary cutting edge stuff and you may find that the content being taught to you particularly in your third and fourth year 
is completely different to the content that was taught to the physics students in your position only a few years prior because the field moves so rapidly. And I think that this is the most important point when it comes to deciding whether you want to study physics because if it's what you're passionate about, then all other factors become irrelevant. I personally think that a physics degree is one of the most interesting and important degrees that you can study. And I hope that this video has helped you determine whether it's for you or not. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more of these videos in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.